Hi guys, Dane here, and welcome to another Archive 5. So if you're new here, basically this is where I take a bunch of old unreleased videos, push them all together into one giant massive video, and then finally get them shared. So today, it is the kind of day trips slash holidays and visits issue. So um, actually a lot of this footage as well is older footage from my old YouTube channel, that has been updated and you know I've put like a voiceover and stuff like that also the timestamps and the links to that will be in the description below and I'll put it in the video here as well so I'll tell you what videos we've got first up we have book hunting in Amsterdam then we have book hunting in Milan then we have book hunting in Canterbury then we have visiting York for York Literature Festival and finally we have visiting Coleridge Cottage so Let's do this. Here you go. We're, we're off on an adventure. Well, hello and welcome to Amsterdam. Today we're taking a look around a couple of bookshops. So this is the American Book Centre. This is probably the most well-known of the big bookshops in Amsterdam. So I try and go there, you know, every time I go to Amsterdam if I can. I really like Amsterdam. It's one of my favourite cities in the world, which is why I've got a bunch of footage of me looking around the bookshops. This was actually taken a couple of years ago. What's great about book shopping in Amsterdam is there's a great mixture of both English and Dutch language books, which is good news for those of you who like to collect foreign editions. So Amsterdam is one of my favourite cities and I've been there maybe three or four times now and there's nothing better than sort of sitting outside in the sunshine or sitting on a boat as it goes along the canals and having a nice little book out in front of you. It's also obviously home to the uh, Heineken experience so you can have a pint with your book as well. Or you can just go to one of the coffee shops and have something a little bit stronger. Now in terms of kind of literary history, Amsterdam and Holland in general obviously have quite a lot written about them. What I think is interesting about Amsterdam is the two main things that come to mind, at least for me, are very different books. Because the first is The Diary of Anne Frank, and you can even go and visit Anne Frank's house, although I recommend booking in advance. And the second is actually The Fault in Our Stars, because if you remember, they head to Amsterdam and track down the elusive author of the book that they both wrote. Now this is the second one that I visited, and this is called The English Bookstore. Again, plenty of books in both English and in Dutch, despite the name. What I really like about bookstores is that you can just go around and have a look at what's on offer. There was a big bunch of classics there, obviously a lot of colour. Sorry about the blurriness of the shots, I filmed this on my old potato camera. I have a better one now. There's a Charles Bukowski, always a big fan of his. Louis Theroux as well. So there's plenty of choice um, as you walk around the city. Now this is just something I shot when I got back. Every time I go abroad I take a notebook with me and write poetry and some journals and that kind of stuff. And this is just a quick little time lapse of slightly younger Dane going through that journal when he got back home. All in all, if you get a chance to visit Amsterdam, I definitely recommend it. And also be sure to check out the links in the description for when Kit Kats can read when to visit the city as well. Hi guys, Dane here, and today we're off to Milan. So this was a long time ago, and it was shot on my old potato camera, so sorry about that. I was actually in Milan because I was speaking at a conference. I was talking about social media marketing at a conference called SMX Milan. While I was out there, uh, my girlfriend at the time flew out to join me, and we decided to go around and go book hunting. So this is the Natural History Museum, or the Museo di Storia Naturale. And as you can see, they have a lot of books about uh, science and all that kind of stuff in their bookshops. A lot of them are in Italian, but a lot of them are in English as well, which is good. Now, I didn't much enjoy my time in Milan, unfortunately. It rained a lot. There was a lot of graffiti and um, the people weren't very pleasant as well. So I actually wrote a poem about it, which I'm going to read to you now. Quick break to see younger me smoking a cigarette. Stop smoking, Dane. It's bad for your lungs. Okay, so this is the poem that I wrote and it's called Naviglio Grande and it's named after a canal area in the city. All hail Milano, city of surprises, where beauty spots blend with building sites and sightseers scorn motorists, careering wildly across tram lines, bad buses built for bored drivers and a change is as good as a rest, my friend. Milano, 
Where the tea is milkless and the tourists are taxed And the money pocketed by corrupt carabinieri Where the city grinds to a halt on sunny Sunday days after 24 hours of rain Where the dogs are nicer than people Church steeples keep appearing Dank with the rancor of homelessness and piss Beggars begging, pickpockets picking pockets Gentle old Italian women escorting bambinos south on the city center Milano, you've been good to me like Coventry. You have the Dutch debauchery in Birmingham's buildings. The division between old and new. The eternal war between science and religion represented by the Santa Maria del Grazie and the Museo di Storia Naturale. Here's another bookshop with me looking for books. That coloring book a few shots ago, I actually bought that and took it home and colored it in. It was a colouring book of sea life animals and it was all in Italian. So I feel like I learned a little bit of Italian. And that's about it for what happened in Milan. Thanks for watching. Hi guys, Dane from socialbookshelves.com here and today I'm going to take you on a magical journey in and around Canterbury where I went for a, a short weekend break, did a few bookish things which you're about to see now. Um, yeah, let's go. So this is where we're staying. We're staying at the Pilgrim's Rest. This is our bed. I have already had a bit of a power nap, so it's not as tidy as it was when I came in. But it's very nice. Look at this place. Uh, you got this as well. A uh, bath. I like baths. I am in, not Canterbury, but near Canterbury. Where are we, little born? Little born, little born. Anyway, I'm near Canterbury, so we're going to go and do some things, and this is what happened. Possibly book things, we're going to see. We're going to go to Hearn Bay right now, and have a look at the sea. <laughs> For sale, luxury apartments. Isn't this a church? Yeah. Oh, it's converted. That's really cool. Nine self-contained flats. Kind of want to move there. We're on a pier. We're just packing up and getting ready to go to Canterbury for the day. Big orange pumpkin bin. Stones. But I'm not going to go in because the books are expensive. Oh, here we go. Where's the entrance? That's an HMV. I thought they were dead. All right. Welcome to the Dane John. Cobain, gardens, gardens, the Dane John Gardens. Full set of bylaws applicable to the Dane John is available for inspection. I do have, I do have a lot of bylaws. So this is the silent table in my garden. I like to um, commission high quality sculpture work to go into gardens that I own. This up here, it says, we are all beautiful, because we are. I wonder if this wall's historic. Anyway, this is the wall around my garden. This is my garden wall. This is what I use to fight away foreign invaders. So I have an archery slot so I can shoot people. Well, guess what? It's my garden. <laughs> my back. See, I can see all of the invading traffic. Summon the longbow men. That's my plinth. Somebody has graffitied my sign. Look at this. <laughs> They've actually sprayed over my name. I'm going to climb my mound. It's a bloody steep mound, this. Jesus Christ. Oh. Windy up here, I feel like I'm gonna fall down. Oh, that's nice though. This is the view from the top of the Dane John Mound. Might take a panorama. We got this thing. Fucking hell, I get, almost got blown down. 
Yes, Weatherspoons. We have lots of charity shops with books. This one first. I'm excited about this one. Pretty big, isn't it? This is me with a cathedral. Oh, it's beautiful in there. It's the left turn. Has a microphone. So there you go, that's what happened in Canterbury. Uh, what did we do? We did the uh, Canterbury Tales attraction, which is obviously based on uh, the works of Chaucer. We checked out Canterbury uh, Cathedral, which was there up at the end. They were having choir practice. It was haunting and spooky and all that stuff. And religious. <laughs> um, we also went to Dane John Gardens, which uh, I'm Dane John Cobain, so, you know, that was cool. Uh, we did a few other bits, we went to Hearn Bay, went along by the sea, all that stuff. I mean, you've just watched it, but I felt like I should recap at the end so you know what it was you just watched. But anyway, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit subscribe, check out playlists and stuff. Uh, if you're on Facebook, like this video, share it with people so they can see my face. And I'll see you soon. Bye. Nick, oh. take two. <laughs> um, we're going to York Literature Festival. Indeed. It's early in the morning. Should we go? We should. Let's go. Nick, we're at platform nine and three quarters, but we gotta go. We gotta find platform zero. Just about made it. Shout out to Virgin East Coast Trains for providing our free tickets. It is, thank you very much. Alright, I figure we'll uh, do a little quick quick tour of the room. That is back backlit on the bed. Look, there's this little control panel here. Ooh, let's change it. Yeah, look at that. Bed. Laptop. We're gonna do some uh, music producing with some spoken word. So keep your eyes peeled for that. It's our little, you know, TV area. Don't know what we're watching, it's gonna be crap. Uh, Nick's messy bed. Short bit of shaky phone footage. So Nick. It is Thursday, Thursday afternoon. We're, you know, it's quite nice, it's quite nice outside. Yeah, this is the, I mean, I'm wearing my coat and you're wearing your jumper, but it is the first, it's, this is my first, my first sort of uh, beer garden of experience the of the year. We're going to the Friargate Anthology launch. You're drinking uh, Punk is Dead. Apparently. Uh, yeah, apparently, we're not Tastes sure about that. Funny. Yeah, <laughs> Tastes dead as well. Um, yeah. You, Excited? Yeah, definitely excited. Okay, okay. It's quite I think a nice day considering all the traps on. Hey, buddy. Hey.
Jorvik and the whiskey shop. Nick, Jorvik's closed, isn't it? Yeah, unfortunately, but is the whiskey shop open? Yeah. I know what I'm doing. Hey. Mr. Kaiser, I'm going to invite you to the English. Don't mind me, I'm just doing some vlogging. Um, hello, it's... Friday morning, Friday the 18th. It's Friday the 18th of March 2016. We're in York for uh, York Literature Festival. We've only got one event today in the evening, so I guess uh, we're gonna go and have a little look around York. We're just, just watching Holmes Under the Hammer in the hotel room, as you can see. Um, and some, we're gonna, we're gonna go and do some tourist stuff with our free York passes. Yeah, we're, not, we're not gonna go and do some tourists. So. No, 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 we're not gonna. Yeah. Yesterday, what happened yesterday? Uh, right, uh, so yesterday we went to the Quakers meeting uh, hall for the Friargate Anthology launch event. Where, ooh, we got a copy of it, I got a copy of it. Friargate Anthology. Um, so there are lots of readings, a bit of uh, music from a composer guy. Uh, yeah, it was good. So I'm gonna read and review this as well. And then we went to the student showcase at York St John University, which was it was pretty good. Uh, some of the uh, readers slash performers, I don't know what you want to call them, but they weren't they weren't uh, very loud. But I, I think that was probably a, a confidence thing because uh, yeah, sometimes sometimes they were loud. So I don't I, I, you can't blame the microphone for that. Uh, yeah, and then we did that. We played a bit of pool, played some snooker. I beat Nick at snooker twice. Um, still got the highest break. Yeah, he's still got the highest break. But I got I put the most number of balls in a consecutive row, and uh, he beat me two one at pool as well. Uh, then we got pizza and beer and sort of chilled. And now it's the morning, so now we can we can go. We're gonna we're gonna go and try and find uh, Kay Hyde, who is uh, some head of marketing and communications at Visit York, I think. This is the market, this is the shambles market. It's my then so Shops, and that's the Minster, and we're going to go over there and have a little look at it in a minute. But first, let's go and look at these books. That's what we do. It is. It's a cool, cool place, though. History room and literature room. Oh my god, I just want to live in this place. Some sort of scaffolding. But we are at York Minster. It's not bad, is it? Yeah. And then, there's that. The towns are not so dark that no one enters. In nearby docks, the knights advance on empty lots. Fanatics gathered in community centres. Cooped up inside at night was a different prospect. In a rental, no one could pretend was Bali or Venice. There you go. Oh, you went. Nick, we're checking out the hotel. What was your thoughts of the Park Inn by Radisson Blue? Well, it's, yeah, it's quite a nice little hotel. It's uh, quite, quite posh. Considering what I'm used to saying, and we um, we turned it into a makeshift recording studio. We did do that. I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. The acoustics were quite nice. It wasn't as bad as we thought it was going to be. There you go. So if you want a hotel room with good acoustics, park in by Radisson.
Anyway, that's what happened to us when we were in York. Uh, we had a great time. Uh, loved it there. Nick actually wants to move there if he can. Uh, but anyway, now we're back home, so I've got a bunch of write-ups to do. We could This video could be like two hours long. I'm trying to keep it below ten minutes. Um, so if you want to know what happened at each individual event, you're going to have to check socialbookshelves.com for the uh, write-ups. But anyway, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit subscribe. Check out York Literature Festival as well. And hopefully I'll see you at next year's festival. Well, I'll see you soon. Bye. Testy, testing, testing turn. Yes, we're going. Let's visit Corridge Cottage. <laughs> okay, so as you might be able to tell, I shot this video a while ago. I was actually on holiday at the time, and I'm recutting it shamelessly because why not? Coleridge Cottage is in Somerset. It's a grade two listed building. So it's a 17th century cottage where Samuel Taylor Coleridge used to live, the romantic poet. He's famous for writing the Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner, which I may even read an excerpt to you from in a minute. Now it's actually quite a big building and there's a lot to see here. As you can see, they won awards. There's a fantastic little gift shop. There's a garden you can walk around, which we'll take a look at in a minute as well. One of the things I really liked is that you can write a little note and attach it to a wall. So as you can see, I'm doing that right now. I'm having a go at a poem of my own. There's also a little book exchange where you can kind of leave books behind or pick up a book of your own and leave a little donation, or wishing well, all that kind of stuff. It really is a nice place and I definitely recommend going. I'm going to leave you with uh, the start of the rhyme of the ancient mariner. It is an ancient mariner and he stoppeth one of three. By thy long grey beard and glittering eyes, now wherefore stopst thou me? The bridegroom's doors are opened wide and I am next of kin. The guests are met, the feast is set, mayest hear the merry din. He holds him with his skinny hand, there was a ship, quoth he. Hold off, unhand me, greybeard loon, eftsoons his hand dropped he. Eftsoons, what a word, what a word.